This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan, with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest news from Alpena Community College with Dr. Olin Joyton. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Doug Talent from Habitat for Humanity Restore. Hi, Doug. Hey, Nancy. How are you doing today? Good. And I know that your um, recent concert you had was a tremendous ex success and you want to thank everyone for coming and supporting you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it worked out uh, a couple weeks ago in August. We had our, our uh, Raise the Roof concert event and it was. It was a beautiful evening and a, and a great success. Uh, we thank everyone for coming out and supporting us and thank our sponsors that made it possible, of course. And uh, we're in the process of deciding if we're going to do it again next year. I sure hope we do. Uh, I think it's a great outreach in the community and a great way to uh, let people know what we're all about. So we're, we're glad it went off without a hitch. And uh, thank you to Randy McCauley, especially. He jumped in and, and made it uh, happen for us. And we, and we wanted to thank him for sure. Yes. So. And as we were talking um, before we started taping, too, about the Restore, if I can't believe anyone hasn't been to the Restore. I wish I had the time to go there every day because the inventory changes on a daily basis. Yeah, exactly. You know, we have new items coming in all the time. You know, we go out on our donation truck twice a week so Tuesdays and Thursdays are the big day for a new inventory to come in but yeah if you if you haven't been at the restore please uh, come in and see what we have uh, you just be amazed we have everything from a uh, pallet of hardwood flooring right now to washing machines and dryers and uh, just a boatload of uh, couches and chairs which is pretty timely I think for kids hunting going camps. back yeah, hunting camps and kids going back to college and things like that uh, so please stop in uh, we're getting ready for a big event down there on September Number 26, 50% yes. uh, off all donated items. So uh, if you guys, if anyone can make it out that Friday, the 26th, and uh, take advantage of the sale, I, I think uh, we're going to have plenty of more items out on the floor, and uh, it should be a great event. And two, the Christmas room is going to be coming soon. Yes, uh, as sad as I am to say summer is coming to an end, it is, and uh, that means uh, the holidays aren't far behind, and we are going to have our annual Christmas room, uh, which we set up in a, a special part of the store, which is dedicated to just holiday items. Uh, we're hoping to have that open probably the week prior to Thanksgiving, but what we need is uh, anyone who uh, may have some Christmas decorations that they're no longer using, please bring them in, whether they're artificial Christmas trees or lights or angels or what have you, uh, all that stuff uh, makes a difference in our Christmas room success and it has been a success for us the last two years. So we have a lot of people in the community that look forward to yes. our Christmas room and uh, uh, we're looking forward to having it again this year. So. so drop your items off. You don't have to wait for a certain time. Drop them off now. And, yep. um, and it's amazing um, going in that Christmas room every year, seeing how much stuff there's in there and then how it's gone the next day. It's like, whoa, you could use a lot more stuff. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the Christmas room, it, it's amazing how much stuff we do go through, uh, how many Christmas trees we sold. I think we probably sold close to 50 artificial yes. trees last year. So uh, anything like that, folks that aren't you're not using any longer or don't have a room for at your place, bring them in. And uh, we'll take them every day of the week. You can bring them to the ReStore uh, Monday through Saturday. And then and uh, if, you, if it's too much for you to bring in, call in, and we'll come out and pick it up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, okay. Yeah. And the next thing we want to talk about is the need for volunteers. Yeah. As always, uh, when we're doing projects or even at the ReStore, uh, you know, this time of year, I think people are getting back to school and kind of back into the fall swing of things, and, and, and thinking about volunteering may not be on the front uh, forefront of your mind. So uh, please, uh, if you guys, anyone has time out there, come by and, and volunteer for even if it's an hour or a half hour um, be part of the restore or come out and help me on a project uh, you know we're doing a rehab project at second avenue in spratt yes and we have a new partner family that we've chosen to move in there and we really would like to get them in by the holidays uh, so they can enjoy their christmas in their new home with uh, their new baby they just had Yay. so uh, and we need volunteers to get that project done. Uh, you know, we'll be doing uh, siding coming up really, really soon and drywall really soon. So uh, even if you don't have building skills, uh, we have something for you to do. So contact me at the ReStore at 354-5555 
or Jenny at our office, who's our volunteer coordinator, and their number is 356-3509. So uh, even if you think you, you, you're not sure about the building part, we'll, we'll find something bring for cookies, you Bring cookies, bring lunch, bring Ex something to drink. Exactly. You know, water is always great to have on site. Bring, you know, snacks for us to, you know, to keep us fueled for the, the busy days that we have at the job site. So yeah, anything uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Fall's a good time for landscaping. If you have landscaping skills, you know, want to dig out some of your flowers, come and tweak some of the flowers there, you know, feel free. Exactly. You know, the yard, uh, you know, the house that we are working on, the yard it needs attention. You know, there's always things like that we could do. And, and uh, you know, to brighten up the surroundings for our new family, that yes. would be a wonderful thing. So yes, absolutely. Okay. And then volunteers at the ReStore too. Yeah, uh, for some reason in the fall we always run into a little bit of um, kind of a lull in our volunteer base, you know, uh, kids back to school and that sort of thing. I think we just, uh, it slips people's mind that we always need volunteers and at the ReStore especially we have donations that need to be cleaned yes. up and, uh, you know, displays that need to be dusted and rearranged and things like that. So uh, there's many different avenues at the ReStore that you can participate in and uh, not necessarily have to be, you know, building anything. So. And once again, I want to go back to the ReStore. If you need, um, I went in the other day and needed a lock, and I had gone to a local hardware store. It was $12 for the lock. I went to Habitat for Humanity and got one for $2. Yeah, I mean, our, our prices, I, I think, are more than reasonable. Uh, we uh, just sold a pallet of laminate flooring. I think normally going for a buck a foot at the, you know, at a normal box store outlet, uh, we were selling it for 25 cents a square wow. foot. So, uh, and that was a whole pallet, probably enough to do a small bedroom. So, uh, yeah, you never know what you're finding, and we try to keep our prices reasonable so that uh, people come back and uh, find us affordable, you know. And I know you work really well with other agencies in the community giving out vouchers and helping people in need too. So thank you so much for that because sometimes maybe um, $20 for a toilet is too much, but that family needs that toilet. So I know that you're really good about helping. Yeah, we, uh, you know, wherever we can, we try to uh, flex to meet people's needs. And whether that's, uh, you know, reducing the price so that uh, folks can afford a an item that they are in desperate need yes. of, or if it's working with another local agency that provides vouch vouchers, you know, uh, it's there's a lot of folks in need out there, and you know, part of our mission is meeting that need. So, okay, one more time, tell us about the half off sale. Yeah, the half off sale, September 26th, Friday. Uh, be there. It's going to be nine to five all day long. Uh, all our donated items will be 50% off. So please stop by and take advantage of the great sale because we don't do this very often. So it's going to be. Uh, it's a kind of a once a year event, so uh, please stop out and visit us. And when people are in the store, just stop in and say, hey, hi, Doug, thank you for what you do. Um, you know, we really appreciate it. The money stays in our community and helps build houses for wonderful families. That's exactly right. That's what we're most proud of, is that our, our everything that folks donate here stays here with us in this community and helps folks that we know. So. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. I'll be right back with some information from Thunder Bay Folk Society following these messages. Hi, welcome back. I'm with Lee Kitzman from the Thunder Bay Folk Society. Hi, Lee, and welcome. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Good, and I'm so excited. You are having your first annual folk festival. Yes. Woohoo! Yes. Uh, the 26th and the 27th of September out at the Antique Tractor Grounds, which is on French Road, about five miles to the uh, northeast, or no, northwest of uh, US 23. Yes, it, I'm sure there'll be signs and it'll be easy to find. Yes. And anyone locally knows where the, the tractor grounds yes, are. Yes, it's used most frequently for any number of events. Well, I'm just really excited about folk music. It's something everybody enjoys, everyone loves, and there really wasn't a venue locally for us to hear folk music, so you're changing that. Yes, absolutely. There are, uh, uh, there's a wealth of talent here in the uh, Alpena area, and uh, a number of us all got together and, and were sitting around and uh, kind of uh, chewing things up, and, uh, you know, somebody threw the idea out. Well, what do you say that we uh, put together a folk festival here? There, you know, there's Wheatland and Bliss and, and any number of uh, festivals that are across 
the state of Michigan, but nothing happening here in the Northeast sector. And our mission statement is fostering traditional music and arts in Northeast Michigan. And that is going to be our focus. As you mentioned, this is the first annual, and this will continue to be an event uh, every year from here on out. And you have a couple of really good headliner groups that we want to make sure we mention. Yes, uh, Roadkill Jack will be on Friday night. Okay. And then we are bringing in the Great Lakes Drifters from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ooh. Yeah, very well-known group. And uh, we also are bringing in from the west side of the state, uh, a well-known in the uh, contra dance community, a well-known caller, Jan Fowler, and uh, her uh, string band, which includes her husband, uh, and they're called the uh, Harbor Hoedown Band. Ooh. And so there'll be uh, contra dance on, featured on Saturday night. And, um, and we have so many things going on. The schedule is going to be hard to say in the amount of time that we have, but we encourage people. There will be posters out. Please look on uh, online on your website because you have you'll have a wonderful schedule there. Yes, actually, in all there will be uh, 24 acts for uh, beginning Friday evening at five o'clock, and uh, we will uh, go until. Uh, Probably about 12:30 with scheduled music, and then we're going to have an open mic session, uh, both evenings. And you're going to have all night long drums. Yes, yes. Uh, there will be a drum kiva and a tribal drum circle that will be going on. Actually, there are many activities that are scheduled yes. for the day. Uh, uh, lots of workshops. This is a family event. We've got lots of things scheduled for the kids. There'll be face painting and there'll be a music workshop for kids and children's yoga. And uh, we've got uh, Rachel Carlson will be doing the hula hoop uh, oh, um, uh, workshop. And uh, so there'll be face painting out there. So we have a lot plan for the kids you know so uh, what's it gonna cost us to get in the gates uh, if you buy your tickets now okay. which are on sale at uh, Joel's guitar shop uh, music and more uh, Neiman's both stores here and in, in uh, uh, East uh, um, Tawas, okay, and uh, also the Black Sheep uh, Pub, okay, and uh, they're thirty-five dollars for the weekend, okay, uh, five dollars a night for camping. There's rustic camping out there. Um, we do. There'll be uh, limited electricity, and um, of course water available. And we have a designated area for the large RV rigs. Oh yay! So yeah, uh huh. Uh, it's uh. There's a buzz going around town. There uh, is. People are beginning to uh, to talk about it, and, uh, and we have sponsorship opportunities available. Very important. We let people know that's what's going to help pay to bring all these bands in and do all these wonderful events and workshops and all the great things that are happening. Absolutely. Uh, the sponsorships uh, run from uh, fifty dollars all the way up to two thousand dollars, depending upon how dedicated you would like to be to the organization. Um, this this is not just a one-time thing. No. And our organization is here to stay in the area. All right, so if someone's listening and they think, wow, I'd like to be a member of the Thunder Bay Folk Society. I'm a musician. That's my favorite music. I know I could contribute. How would they contact someone, Lee, to, to find out all the particulars? Go to the website, okay. which is thunderbayfolksociety.org. And you can, you know, uh, roam around uh, on the website and uh, find out all the information about the organization, uh, membership uh, application available there, uh, so, and contact information for all of the board members so that if you have okay. questions and you want to talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody, no problem. Okay, and we have about three minutes left, so we have enough time. So Friday, what time does it start on Friday the 26th? We will, we will open the gates at 8 a.m. Okay. Okay, and then the first music will begin at 5 o'clock okay. in the evening. So get in, get set up. Yep. Now, is there going to be food? Um, yes, food okay. vendors. Uh, we will have food vendors. Um, uh, Kelly's Lunchbox is going to be out okay. there, and uh, we're also going to have the uh, 
the pizza wagon from oh, yay. yeah from the cedar uh, uh, from the cellars. Okay. Uh, I can't remember the flattery. What, yes, that's it. The flattery will be out there as well, and uh, baked goods and so. Uh, There'll be uh, several other different vendors as well. Uh, the Alpina Weavers Guild will be there, blues guitar, jazz guitar, lots of things to do. So if you know, the music will be playing, there, you can go here, go there, but we want to stress that it's a family event. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, and then Saturday, what time do the gates open? Um, Saturday, the gates will open at 8 o'clock as well. Okay, as well. Yes. And just lots of things going on throughout yep. the day. Best bet is to stop and Absolutely. to find a schedule somewhere or go online to Thunder Bay Folk Society and check out a schedule. Right. The schedule will be listed on the uh, Folk Society uh, page within the next day. Okay. You will see posters around town with a schedule of all the uh, groups that are going to be performing. And you have to look at that schedule to read about some of the groups that are going to be there. Just outstanding local, regional people that are coming. It's just going to be wonderful, wonderful music. Well, we just have a gold mine of uh, local talent. And that's what was discussed in originally was we need an event to be able to feature all of the local talent that we do have in the area and this is going to give us an opportunity to do that and so I highly encourage the folks of the community to come on out and see who might be your next door neighbor yes. on stage performing. And Alpina and does have musical talent every genre possible. We absolutely. have the music, the musicians who do it, sing it, play it, enjoy it. Absolutely. We're out of time. I want to thank you very much, Lee, and I look forward to hearing about your performance, too. Well, thank you very much for having me, Nancy. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joynton following these messages. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Olin Joynton, president of Alpena Community College. I guess this morning, superintendent of Alpena Public Schools, Brent Holcomb. Welcome well, to the show. Thanks, Olin. I appreciate it. I uh, look forward to the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, school and what's going on. That's right. Education in Northeast Michigan. Yeah, we like it. we got yeah. all the power to bees right here. <laughs> <you know? laughs> So we both uh, kicked off the school year, years after Labor Day. We got started a little bit before. Um, and uh, that's always a, a good feeling. Uh, we educators, I, I think, n never lose that excitement in the fall when school gets started again. No, well, you know, the, the merchants all start us off with the back to school specials. And, you know, it's nice that the kids uh, are all excited and getting ready to come back. They get their new shoes and new clothes and get on the bus. And, you know, it's been a really good start for us. Yeah. Well, um, I'd like to focus most of the show this morning on the big new venture, joint venture, that, that we have together, Alpena Early College. And uh, why don't you tell me how that got started first on the legislative level with the, you know, extra funding and then uh, what uh, you and your staff did to implement the possibilities sure. here. Well, first off, we've, we 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 found a good partner, ACC, you know. So that was perfect having you guys in our backyard. And I give a lot of credit to Joyce McCoy. I mean, Joyce is just a go-getter, and uh, you know, she's that individual who sees opportunity and seizes it. And so, um, absolutely, she, you know. she she was the one who um, really spearheaded this initiative and, and really admired the way uh, that, that she has uh, pulled it off. You put her and uh, Kathy Marsh together, and, and good things will happen. <laughs> it's not the people at the top; it's the people working <laughs> under the people right. at the top. That's right. Yeah, they they make us look good. Uh, you know, it's it's really cool that uh, you know the state is uh, seen a, a a way to reach out to families and uh, make uh, college possible. Um, you know, what's really neat about this is that uh, you know we enter into a relationship with families. It's a contract of sorts to say, you know what. If you're willing to stay with us for five years at Alpena Public Schools, uh, we're going to get you some college education paid for, uh, courtesy of the state of Michigan. So right. it's a good deal. Well, I remember uh, back in 2004 with the Cherry Commission report on higher education and economic growth, uh, there was uh, an emphasis in one and in, in one of the recommendations on early college uh, for people in high school who are ready to start off with that level of instruction. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, you've been a great uh, dual enrollment partner uh, with us since then. Uh, uh, but uh, last year, I guess the, the legislature approved for the current fiscal year uh, funding for a 13th year 
uh, foundation allowance uh, for uh, uh, kids who would sign up for a three-year early college program. Yep, that's accurate. And you know, and I'm not sure if everybody grasps the power that goes there. And you know, we're really trying to uh, work hard to educate parents about this opportunity to say, hey. You know, why don't you let us pay for uh, college for you and your child? And uh, um, this year, I think we had what 34, 35 that enrolled. Yes, sir. Um, and Tremendous response. Yeah, uh, we had a great response. And uh, kids know, who are willing to spend an extra year uh, officially as Alpena high school students, but gravitating starting in their junior year to more and more college instruction through ACC, yep. so that they have a certificate from ACC in addition to the high school diploma yep. after that extra year. Yeah, it's a real big payoff for families. And, you know, I think the piece that uh, is really cool for families is even though they have to spend the extra year, students still get to graduate with their their class. Uh, so if they're scheduled to graduate in their fourth year, um, they're able to do that walk at graduation. And we just hold out one credit for that fifth year to justify the state aid. and. Uh, most of the fifth year is going to be for ACC credits and if families think about this, this is a great opportunity to save some money. Right. And we're trying to tie the curriculum to uh, technical programs where ACC really does excel as well as some arts and sciences. Yep. Um, well, the, you know, the hands-on um, CTE approach is all good stuff and we have a strong program at the high school and it's really nice when we can mirror it with what's going on at ACC. Yes, well, um, it's a great project. Uh, I know when Joyce first brought it up, uh, she brought a map of the state of Mich Michigan, and uh, the early college operations were in place, maybe 15 yeah. or 20 other places around yeah. the state, uh, and but uh, nothing in northeast Michigan. So, uh, you know, this program is a pioneer, and I know there, there's some other school districts uh, in Northeast Michigan, yep. that might also uh, be interested in following in, in in the footsteps. I know well, uh, Superintendent Sean Thornton from Alcona was present yep. at one of those meetings. Well, I think one of the things about a good deal is nobody likes to miss out on one. And That's right. you know, when Joyce talked to us about enrollment, um, you know, we have about oh, close to 1,300 students at the high school, and uh, her question was, "So, how many do you think we're going to enroll?" And, and we initially thought 30 or 40 kids, but mm -hmm. in the long run, I think if parents take a good look at this, there could be 1,300 students at AHS uh, enrolling at ACC through uh, fifth year of college and early college. That's great. Yep. Well, uh, thank you very much for being a, a part of that collaboration, and, and it's just uh, working working like a charm. I, I see that uh, Lee uh, Fitzpatrick has been appointed um, as the, yep. the uh, liaison officer for the program. Yeah, he, you know, Lee is just uh, one of those guys that uh, you know, he has a great relationship with parents and with students, and you know, I think he's going to bring a lot of energy to the program. That's great. Um, anything else uh, to talk about from the public school perspective? You know, it, it, the things are cooking at school. I mean, we got, uh, you know, we're, we're one of the largest geographic school districts in Lower Michigan, and mm -hmm. we put a lot of miles on our buses. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's just glad that, uh, you know, we had a, a good kickoff to the school year. At the college, uh, we are um, a, a, a ahead of schedule in the construction of our electrical power technology center uh, for expansion of uh, instruction in electrical trades. Uh, and we are uh, in the planning stages for a bachelor's degree in electrical systems technology, as we're authorized to do by the state. Yep. Uh, and the Marine Tech Program um, has gotten off to uh, a good start this year, 14 students enrolled. Uh, so this will be the second class coming through, and we're real proud about the collaboration that we've enjoyed with the Marine Sanctuary. Uh, I appreciate you putting so, all those pieces in place for our kids. Uh, you know? uh, gotta, gotta think about possibilities, what's gonna work in Northeast Michigan. Yep. Very good. Well, thank you very much for thank being you all. Uh, appreciate uh, the guest on the program and, and even more importantly, all the great work you do well. uh, in here in the community with the school system, with the college. Thank you very well, much. I appreciate our friendship and I appreciate ACC, so thank you. You're welcome. This has been Talk of the Town with Nancy Smith and Dr. Owen Joyden. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, visit our website at www.wbkb11.com and click on Community. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.